Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today is lesson five of my guide to learning piano. And in today's video, we are going to start talking a little bit about chords. So we are just gonna jump right in on today's lesson. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the C major chord. So the C major chord is really simple. It's just C, E, and G all played together. So on the piano, this is how it would look for right hand. For left hand, it's just the same thing. And I can put this up on the screen for you guys, but you may also see this referred to as the I chord or the one chord. Sometimes you'll see these written as Roman numerals and the bass chord regardless of what key you're in, it could be G, F, C, whatever, will be called the one chord. So in the case where we're in C, the one chord will be C, E, G. Okay, staying in the key of C, we are learning the five, seven chord. If you are following along in the book here, you will notice they write it as the G seven chord. It is the same exact thing. It's just um, a different name for it, but it's the same chord. So this will be B, F, G. This is our five, seven chord. Um, it's played the same in left hand and right hand. So it's just B, F, G. It sounds a little bit funny, but that's just what the five, seven chord is. So this is the point where I'm going to recommend you get yourself a scale book if you don't have one already on hand. So a scale book is going to help you understand a lot of these chords and kind of what they're doing, why they're doing them. And for me at least, it helped grasp the idea of what chords are, how they work in different keys a lot faster versus if you don't have a scale book. So this is the one I always recommend. It's linked in my link tree if you would like to purchase it. But I really like this one because Every page has, so you have the key you're in, in this case we're in C major. So you'll have your scale, which I also have another video on if you would like to go check out. We have the scale, we have the two octave scale, and then there are triad inversions, which we will be getting into within the next few lessons. And we also have chord progressions and arpeggios. So basically just everything you need to know for each key. And that is so helpful because it just breaks everything down a lot more, I feel like. It makes it easier to understand kind of what chords are and why they're doing what they're doing. So again, that one is linked if you would like to buy it. There are also plenty of other scale books out there. This is the just the one I personally have used and really liked. Okay, so we are gonna talk about a few more things in this lesson that you will be seeing on the next few pages in the book. The first one is tied notes. So a tied note is when you have two of the exact same note and you will see them connected with a little curved line. This is called a tie. What this is telling us to do is to hold out for the combined count of the two notes. So for example, if I have two half notes tied, I'm going to hold for four counts instead of playing half note for two beats and then half note again for another two beats. I'm playing it once and holding it for the combined beats. I could also have a half note tied to a quarter note and I would hold for three beats. There's a lot of different notes you can tie, but just know that you will just hold it for the combined beat of the tied notes instead of playing it twice. So the next thing you're gonna see is the three, four time signature. We talked about this a couple videos back about the four, four time signature, and now we are learning the three, four. So remember, the four, four time signature tells us there's four beats in a measure and the quarter note gets one count. The three, four time signature is really similar. It just tells us that there's three beats in a measure and the quarter note will still get one count. And the very last quick little thing we're gonna go over is a new note that you will see on these pages, again, if you're following along in the book, and this is the dotted half note. We've already learned the quarter note, half note, whole note. This one gets three counts because it has that little dot next to your half note. So instead of getting two, it'll get three. That is everything we are going to cover in this lesson. If you are following along in the book with us, again, this will be pages 32 to 41, so a little bit of a bigger chunk. 
Um, if you have any questions on anything we went over in this lesson, anything you might be struggling with, feel free to ask as always. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already because you don't want to miss any of our new lessons. And again, everything is linked in the description, the iCard, and I hope to see you very soon.